Hello and welcome. Let me show you what I've been up to. So this episode is about granite. So I'm going to show you the granite here, how it was installed and how much it was. And then I'll show you what else I've been up to. So that's the kitchen. That's how the granite looks. The sink that you're looking at, that is a 30 inch sink that I got from Home Depot for about 107 bucks. So it's 30 inches. So it's a little bit smaller than a traditional 36 inch sink. Uh, the space underneath that you saw the empty hole that's for the dishwasher and this is where the stove is going to go right there and um, this piece here that you see that's unfinished i'll show you that at the end of the video uh, what my plan for that is for those unfinished sides of the cabinets so make sure you watch to the end or uh, flip forward and to see basically how that came out so that's the bathroom so the granite price was 1940 bucks and that included the bathroom here and also the kitchen that also included that sink right there and as i told you i had to get my own um, sink for the kitchen so that you can add the 107 bucks to the 1940 and everything is basically ready good to go for the plumber you can see the three holes that are punched right there they drilled that through on the site so that's for my fixtures and that's my little bathroom right there so now i'm going to show you what i was talking about how i plan on finishing the sides of those cabinets so as i'm putting stuff together here i'm going to show you um, i'm going to talk about how not to get ripped off when getting granite at the end of the video i'm going to show you a short little clip with the whiteboard as i usually do and you'll see a section uh, circled well not circled but you're gonna see uh, my arrow going two feet by two feet in the corner right there where my water is sitting right here in the picture usually what happens with granite uh, the some places cheat you and they what they do is they double up the corner so what that means they they count the long side the side that i'm working on all the way up to the wall where you can see my wood um, uh, fixture for the the power outlet I'm kind of blocking it right now so it's two feet by ten feet so that's 20 square feet and then when they count the other way to count the corner to go behind me where I'm standing right now they also count from the left side of the wall right where the water is sitting going the other way so that would be another two feet by three feet so that's six square feet where in actuality it should be only one foot by two so it should be only two square feet that little piece that you see sticking out like the letter L upside down that I'm blocking with my body right now I don't know if that makes sense to you but basically that corner two feet by two feet in that corner where the water's sitting they double that they charge you basically twice so that if you're paying see the glue on the that's what I'm doing I'm doing friction fit on this and you'll see how I'm gonna keep everything together so what they do is two times two four four square feet times if you're paying 40 50 dollars a square foot for granite that could be a 200 square feet of granite that they're overcharging you on so just keep that in mind i don't know if that makes sense to you but basically they're just counting twice in that little corner right there so if you do your math and you're off by four square feet if you're dealing with granite people you basically know who you're dealing with and you should walk out and go somewhere else and that's pretty much what I did this guy advertises low prices but then this is how he makes up for it and uh, I don't know I don't want to get into the conversation but because he upset me let's say um, I was asked to leave the business but um, because I told him what I think of him I just don't like scumbags and this guy was just uh, this just a scumbag well, that's basically it you see what I'm doing there so it's a little tongue and groove I got that from Home Depot and I put a little line where I gotta cut it so I got that I'm sorry I got that from Lowe's and um, I decided to put that on the side of the cabinets just to make them look better instead of buying just like the single board that you usually put up there and I think it just looks so much better doing it this way it gives it a little bit more of a rustic look so this is the reason why I did it I never done this this is my first time doing it I'm just trying it out and after I was done with it I absolutely loved it so this is how I'm gonna do my uh, cabinets from now on 
So a little smack there, and you see this is friction fit, so there's no nails in there, it's just glue. And that's how it turned out. So it's uh, about a quarter of an inch thick. So it's very thin tongue and groove, and it was absolutely perfect what I wanted to do. And here you want it to stick out just a little bit, just a hair, so you can't see the cabinet behind it. And see, this way it just looks like a complete product, and it just sticks out a little bit. And that's just like I said, so you can't see the cabinet behind it. It looks nice and finished. And if you're standing on the floor, you can't really see that it sticks out just a hair. And I cut this here on a 45 degree angle just so it looks a little bit better. And I still have to touch that up and bring that in uh, with stain. And then also you'll see me put a clamp on it in a second just to keep everything in. Because like I said, I didn't want to nail it. I just want to try out the friction fit and glue and see how it holds up. So see here I'm putting just wood on wood. So if you do something like this, just make sure you put wood on wood so you don't scratch uh, your wood because pine is very, um, you can dent it real easy. So just keep that in mind. So if you're working something with something like this, if you're putting pressure on it with a clamp, just be, e just be easy with it. And so you don't dent your wood and just don't, don't make it look bad. It's just a little bit of finesse and once you do this enough times, I guess, with other things, with clamps, you'll kind of get the pressure and all that good stuff. So you can see how everything in this picture here, you can see my window trim. This is, by the way, for the microwave that you're going to see me install right now. Uh, this is the templates. Um, it's Spanish up there, Plantilla del Gabinete Superior. Uh, you didn't think uh, I knew how to speak Spanish, did you? <laughs> But uh, here's the English section. Um, and this section didn't have an English section. It was just a white blank you know sheet. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> so yeah, it's a but it's it's <laughs> it's not rocket science. You just basically hold it up to the wall and um, you you mount everything the way it's supposed to. you notch out your holes where they're supposed to go. And that's what you're going to see me uh, do here. So this is the one that goes against the wall there. And that kind of gives you the idea of uh, how the microwave is going to sit. So I'm going to put my pencil on it in a second. And this is basically the back of the microwave. Um, if you're venting the microwave, you can cut a hole in the wall, which I will not be doing. That's the dark section on that template right there that I have my hands over right now. That's if you're going to be um, venting your microwave straight out the wall like that. So this is just going to have a regular charcoal filter like 99% like of the microwaves that are out there. And here I'm just marking um, where to put the, the metal bar. You'll see that in a second. Um, that's how the microwave is going to sit on that. And I'll show you that here. Uh, here you're seeing me measuring because I have my cabinets mounted so I'm just looking where my studs are so I can transfer uh, measure those marks and transfer those marks to the wall below so I can uh, go into the wall and make sure that the microwave is nice and secure so it does not fall off the wall and if you watch the other uh, cabinet episodes you know how I find my studs I do it the old-fashioned way so I do not use the metal uh, stud finders because I just don't like those things I don't trust them I'm just old school, old fashioned. And see, I had to clip that a little bit because it was a little bit too long. And the reason why it was too long, see, I'm putting a level on it, make sure that it's nice and level. My OCD kicks in here, so I had to shorten this because it this took a couple of minutes, just me messing with the OCD. But I have little trim right there behind me. You see that on the, on the section where the microwave, um, I don't need to go all the way up. But that little trim is going to mess with me in a second. I just didn't realize it at this point. I also uh, broke my bit over here. So that little trim piece I had to remove to mount the microwave because the microwave didn't want to go in. There wasn't enough space. But like I said, I didn't realize that till I pretty much uh, slung the microwave up there. So now I'm, all I'm doing is just uh, making that cabinet screw a little bit tighter, putting a level on it. And make sure everything is nice and level and just securing that uh, metal plate to the wall so it doesn't go anywhere and I did do that with cabinet screws 
so they have a little bit bigger head on it so it can hold that thing together and look at the screws you can see them they're not just regular screws they got big heads on it and here is nice everything is nice and level if the camera focuses you see that and that's a magnetic level that's how it's magically uh, staying up there and that's basically that so once you do that you put the other template on on the top and this one shows you where you should drill the holes because you're gonna need one hole for the power cable and then you're gonna need two more holes to mount the, the screws for the microwave and see that's the one for the power cable so I have a little thing I bought from Home Depot and I think it was like seven eight bucks I'm standing back because you get a lot of the dust and everything in your eyes and it's never fun so I kind of lean back when I do that you see that look at that pretty little circle and then now I'm gonna be drilling the holes for the for the bit to come down into the microwave and to secure the bolt basically from the top from the inside of the cabinet into the microwave so that's what that is and when I drill in there you'll see me doing that in a second I kind of wiggle <laughs> you'll hear me leaning back again and so I got dust in my eyes so that's never fun so that's why I do that so basically when you put that bolt in there from the top kind of where my hands are right now I'm just kind of cleaning it up there a little bit to get the stuff out the way um, you put that in there and then you adjust the microwave so it sits nice and pretty see I'm putting the bolt in kind of to give it a test run and I'm wiggling it to make that hole a little bit bigger so it's an easier fit and I got a little bit of playroom that I can work with I see wiggle that in so that's how the, that's me being stupid okay don't let children go on a construction site <laughs> and see that's me putting the microwave up and like I told you that trim piece on the bottom is messing with me this is where I realized that because once I put that in I'm like why is it so tight in here and then I had to remove those pieces right there and then I trim those pieces and I put them back on once the microwave is mounted so that's what was messing with me and here I'm putting the power power plug through the hole that I just made and the back of the microwave uh, rests on that metal plate there's special grooves that are on the back of the microwave and all you do is just tilt it up and then put the bolts through the top and adjust it so you see the bolts go through the top the microwave has holes on the on the top and that bolt just screws in there and it's very forgiving because um, the microwave, uh, the, the taking, I guess, hole for the bolt is flexible. It moves back and forth. So you can kind of adjust it. And see here, I have enough confidence that I know basically what's going on. The microwave is sitting securely. All you have to do is just secure those bolts and make sure everything is nice and level. And so it just takes a little bit, couple of minutes, and it just gets done as you see me here wiggle wet back and forth so then you take your drill and just secure it nice and tight and that's all that's to it to mount a microwave um, so at this point you just secure everything in there and that's pretty much it uh, like I said you have to adjust it a little bit to make sure everything is nice and level and you secure it so it obviously doesn't fall and that's it and here is how I finish those sides of the cabinets as you saw me working earlier but see this is the bottom this is next to the microwave over there and here's the other side see so I think it came out great and that little tongue and groove from Lowe's that works pretty well on that and this is what I was talking about in the episode how you don't want to get ripped off where it says two by two that's it 